Let's talk about how we can use a thigh wrister in a circuit. In this circuit, we've got AC power supply, so this is given here. I've just uh, drawn a motor, but this could be any load, any sort of device. And I've got my, my thigh wrister here, and this is my gate connection. So I've got my circuit here, but unless I turn my gate on, nothing's gonna happen. So even if I have my AC supply turned on, if this is turned on, but my there's nothing on my, my gate, so there's no gate voltage applied, then the device is off and I just get blocking, okay? Now, if I turned my, my gate on all of the time, so my gate is uh, switched on, so my device is switched on, well, don't forget that this device only allows current to flow one way, so the current will flow this way, so it would act in this case as a rectifier and I would just get half of the AC waveform coming out. Okay, so um, of course, we've already got a supply here. So it seems to have to, to just hook this up to a separate supply. So what you could do is then attach the gate into this circuit in some way. So if I put a switch here, for example, and I'm gonna add a diode and let's see, make a potential divider. If I was to attach my gate into the rest of the circuit in this way, I've got a switch here. So unless I close the switch, the device is off, the fire wrist is off. So there will be no current output. When I close the switch, this is what happens. I close my switch here. And that means um, when, my, when I'm in the positive cycle, the reason I've put a diode here is because I don't want to put a negative bias on my gate because I don't want to damage my device. So essentially, when I have the positive cycle of my AC supply, then I'm going to get a positive potential on the, the gate, but I'm also gonna get my potential across the device. So they both switch on at the same time. And this also leads me with a half wave rectified uh, output. So that's not very useful at the moment because all we've done, I mean, we can use a diode for that, right? So all we've done is switch a thigh wrist on at the same time as the, the, the positive uh, part of our AC cycle. And that just gives us half wave rectification. The only reason this would be advantageous is because even though you could use a diode, if you had a, a, just a single diode in a, a circuit which had a high current, then this would, in when it's in reverse bias, this would damage the diode. Here, here in this case, you have um, a thigh wrister which can handle the, the high current, but your diode in, in this supply is only in the ring, in the circuit in the ring, which has a very low current going through it because you know that you have a low gate voltage. But what would be more interesting is if we could supply a pulse to this, to this gate such that we could control when we turn the device on. Because if we do this, instead of having half wave rectification, we could say, well, what if I apply little, little on pulses that are like this? And the timing of these on pulses would match the amount that I want to be able to control my uh, AC signal. So for instance, if I pulse this here and then here and then here so that it was lined up say here, then my device wouldn't turn on at the start of the, at the start of the signal, but it would turn on a little bit later on. And what you see is you only get a partial wave cycle. So this is a, a method of, um, yeah, adjusting how much power output you get because I'm essentially uh, choosing how much of my AC signal I'm getting put out. And this is really useful. It's called phase control, AC phase control. It's really useful for like dimmer switches in lights because you can turn them down in this way. Um, and for instance, here I have a motor. If you were able to pulse so that you only have half of the wave, 
half of my half wave, so then I only have a quarter of my original signal. So this was my original supply. And in that way, you can control your device. So things like, um, like a power drill, for instance, you have different power switches, and this is exactly what's taking place. Now, it's easy for me to say, oh, okay, so just apply a signal at the right time to switch your thyristor on, but how can we do that in terms of a circuit? Well, what we do is we can have a resistor, uh, here I'm going to have a capacitor and this will be attached, let's draw this. I still need a diode because I don't want to, rev I don't want to apply a negative bias to my, to my gate. And here you can see what would happen is, as my AC signal comes in, this capacitor would start to charge up. And as it charges up, so uh, here it would say it was at ground, for instance, and when it charges up, it would eventually, the potential difference would be dropped across here that would be big enough to, to switch the thyristor on. So you would have enough positive potential, that 0.7 volts, across here to switch this on. And in order to control this, it's a, a, we've got an RC circuit, we could have a variable resistor so that you could change the resistance here and that would change because you've essentially got a potential divider here. So that would change the potential at which the, the gate voltage is applied at greater than at equal to uh, 0.7 volts and the thyristor turns on. So this allows you to, to gain um, phase control. However, hopefully you can see, well, because a thyristor is a one-way device, you can only ever get a maximum of a half a half wave through this. So the maximum power would always only be half of what you would have if you had a full AC supply. So in order to get 100% phase control, we can use either, um, we can build a rectifier circuit into this, or we can use something called a triac. And a triac is essentially two thyristors that are back to back. And I'll talk about that very briefly. We know that a triac is just two thyristors put together. Um, so in both directions, in forward bias and re reverse bias, actually it has the same characteristics as a thyristor did in forward bias. So if you know what an IV, uh, the IV characteristics look like for a thyristor, then it's easy to extrapolate and understand what the IV characteristics of a triac would be like that you can see here. Previously, when I discussed thyristors, we said that one of the problems in using them for phase control is that you can only get a maximum of a half wave output. So if my input for my AC supply is a full wave like this, uh, at my motor, you would only get a half wave maximum. And you can make that smaller, so you have some phase control because you can make that smaller by using a variety of uh, resistors and capacitors like I showed you in order to, to trigger the gate later so that you get less than 50% of our uh, of our full wave but yeah it's a one directional device a thyristor so in order to get full phase control then we can use the triac because it's bi-directional it conducts in both directions when it's on when there's a gate voltage applied so let's have a look at a really similar circuit to the one with thyristors I have an AC supply here it goes through my motor and then I've got a triac here and goes back to my supply. But unless I apply a gate voltage, then the triac is off and there will be no conduction. So the, the, the circuit is not complete because there's no gate voltage. So it means that regardless of my input, my output at the motor, for instance, is going to be zero. Now, of course, as soon as I close this switch, what we're doing is we're applying a gate voltage here that is in phase with this signal. So actually the gate voltage and the voltage, well, the, the, the currents that are going through both circuits, so the, the triac and the gate, are both in phase with each other. So that means once this is closed, I will get also a full wave at my motor. So I now have a full wave 
scenario. And of course, uh, my gate is attached to both a P and an N junction, so it doesn't matter uh, what the polarity, what the, whether this is positive or negative here, that doesn't matter. So, um, so that would give me f a full wave, so I can go from zero uh, to completely on. Now, if I wanted to go to a half wave situation, I could add another option for this switch, so it could go through a diode through to here. So now I could have my switch in the off state. I can have it giving me a half wave coming out or uh, sorry, or a no wave, a full wave coming out, or I could have it giving me a half wave because once I attach it here, then I'm only going to get current flow here in one direction. So I end up with half waves. So the gate is only triggered on half of my uh, AC signal. Now, of course, we've gone from zero to full to half. Now, again, if we wanted to regulate that in between, then we can use a very similar situation uh, as the last time. So instead of having a switch here, for instance, you could have also a variable resistor so that you could have like a, a on your device something that you could turn a switch that you could turn that will be connected here to your gate and you would have a capacitor here so that your gate would only switch on when the voltage drop has become enough to switch the triac on so this gives you full ac phase control